PeachTools.com. G'day, 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 guys. Pick and pick tools. Awesome to see you here again today. Hey, you fellas ever been welding and then all of a sudden your wire gets stuck in your liner? It'd be a right pain in the ass, and sometimes it's really, really hard to get out as well. This video, I've just got a couple of quick tips what I do to get my wire out when it's stuck. Anyway, guys, same as usual. If you like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, come say good day at peachtools.com, and let's get into it, eh? So here's my MIG, guys. It's just a Chinese MIG welder, 250 amp. Um, it's an inverter type. But every now and then I get an issue with my wire getting stuck on the liner. And nine times out of ten, it's because of the drive rollers here. What happens is it puts a little kink in the wire. I'll show you. There you got your wire running through there. It puts a little kink in the wire. Not a big one, just enough to pull into the liner. Once you get it past here, it's almost impossible to get out of your gun. And I've spent bloody hours trying to get this stuff out and I couldn't figure out how to do it. So in the end, I have to disassemble the gun. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But why sometimes you get a little kink in your wire is because your wire tension's not right. Maybe it's too much or it's too little. If it's um, too much, it's squashing your wire and it may break and actually go into, force itself into the liner here. Or if it's too little, it could spin on the top and actually take little chunks off your wire and jam it in the liner as well. But I've got a video on how to set your tension. So check that out in the description below. So what we'll do is pull the gun off this machine and I'll show you how to get the wire out once it's stuck really fast in your liner. I'll show you what I mean guys. When I pull the trigger, this will actually spin and it won't turn the roll because what it is is the liner here is jammed up. It's got the wire in it and the wire must have a kink or something in it and it's jammed in the liner. Anyway, I'll show you. See that? That's spinning. That's not moving. And you can actually hear it. You listen to it. You can hear it scraping. So we've actually got a stuck wire in the liner here. So the only way to do that is to pull something to bits like I said. So let's go and do that, eh? So because the wire is stuck in here, guys, and it won't come out now when I push the trigger on the gun. Can you hear that? It's just scraping. So what we're going to have to do is take this off. But sometimes when you get it really jammed in there like this is, it's pretty hard to take this off. So you will undo it and you give it a bit of a yank. And um, either a little bit of wire will come back from the torch or a little bit will come out of the machine, hopefully. So sometimes you've really got to yank it to get it apart. So just undo it like normal, guys, like so. And then try and pull it out because the wire's stuck in there. There we go. We've managed to pull it out a little bit like that. Can you see the wire in there, guys? So what we need to do is just cut it off because you're not going to get that much movement out of it. Yeah, oh, we're free now, guys. See that? So we've got it disconnected from the machine. So if, no, no, if I turn the machine on now, and um, we'll see if this wire comes out, and then we'll know that it's stuck in the liner and not back further. So because we've got the torch off, guys, I can't pull the trigger to see if this wire's going to come out of here. So I just you do this. Just get a piece of our welding wire like this, and be careful when you do this, guys, because that... Um, that wire can come out at a fair rate of knots and you can stab yourself in the finger or something with it. So say we've got the wire coming out here, get your piece of wire, bend it into a U like that and just put a couple of little tips on it like so. And if you see here, you've got a contactor here and a contactor here, just put these two bits of wires in there and just make it short. But keep your fingers away from this wire. And then we'll see if it's the uh, drive rollers or we'll see if it's stuck on the liner. Here we go. See that guys? So it's obviously the liner. We're stuck on the liner. So we're stuck on this end, and then we're stuck on this end as well. This end won't move either. See that? It just won't come out. You can hear it slopping around inside the gun. It's moving the gun parts. So what we have to do, guys, is actually pull out the liner here. So to do that, we have to lay the gun out flat. So I'll just drape them over this end of my table here. So I've got the gun running flat that way. So what we'll do now is just grab the liner here and pull. And the flatter you got it, the easier it should come out. Ooh. It's easier said than done, Pete. Don't want to come out, guys. So what we'll have to do, grab the other end and disassemble that first. Sometimes you can get away with it, and sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can get away with not pulling this end of bits, but other times you can't. This depends where your wire's stuck, so obviously we have to do it this time. So take your nozzle off, guys, and then take your contact tip off. 
Sometimes you might find that the wire is also stuck in your contact tip. You may have to put pliers on there after you unscrew it and give it a yank. That one comes off alright, so that just proves our wire is bent up somewhere in the liner. Next, take off your contact tip holder. Be careful when you take that off, because some of these torches have a ceramic swirl ring. This one here is like a silicon one, so it doesn't really matter, it bends and buckles. So take that off. And then hopefully, we can grab the other end of it and pull it through. So we just lay it out flat again. So grab a handful of it, here we go. A lot easier this time, guys. See that? Yeehaw! There we go. There's our wire stuck in our liner. So what we've got to do now, guys, I'll take this end here and I'll put it in the vise. I won't use this end for the simple reason it's got a brass fitting on it. And if we can get to use the same liner again, if I can get the wire out, that'll be all good. But I don't want to be damaging this um, brass little sleeve here that goes into the torch. So we'll just put them in the vise, guys. So I just put them in the vise, guys, and what I do, why I do also do it this way is, because this is the steel part of my liner, and as long as I don't crush it too much, it shouldn't hurt it, and you get the whole width of your vise, that it can, it can clamp it, rather than just a little bit on the end. But don't do it up too tight, because you'll just give yourself more problems. And then if you haven't got a vise, you can't really wrap this liner around anything to get, get you something to pull against, because as soon as you wrap it around, you're going to put a constriction in it. So you're getting really going to need a vice, guys, but just make sure you don't crush that liner. Right, grab a pair of pliers. So we've got to be able to get some purchase on it now. That's got a kink in it somewhere in this liner. I'll straighten it out a bit more. You can hear it coming. There it comes. Yeah, And that was stuck in there. See this guys, I think that was the problem. Can you see that little kink in there? Doesn't take much. There's a little kink like that, and then your wire is stuck fast in that bloody liner, and it's a pain in the ass to get it out. Just a little thing like that. That's what I'm saying about the drive rollers, because your drive rollers can cause this. It just, if you've got too much pressure and you just hit an obstruction, it goes a tick and just puts a little dent in it and you'll get it stuck in your liner and you'll have all sorts of issues. Right, pain in the bum, Pete reckons. So we've got the wire out of it now, guys. So before we go and throw this back in there, we'll just run our fingers along it and just examine it, make sure it hasn't got any kinks in it. Because if you have any kinks in this, you can have the same issue over and over again. And the price to replace one of these is two-fifths of bugger all, you know. So sometimes it's just easier to chuck a new liner in. But sometimes you're in the middle of a job and you're just nowhere near a store or whatever. So you just make do with what you got. Well, that's what I do anyway. So now we'll just, if you just run your fingers along it like that, you can feel if there's any kinks in it. Feels there's a little bit here. But we'll probably get away with that. And then we come up to the insulator bit. That's pretty good actually. It must have just been that one kink in the wire. So we won't reassemble the gun end just yet, guys. What I'll do is I'll feed that liner back in here. And then we'll put it onto the welder. And then we'll run some wire through. And then I'll put the fittings on the end of it. That way we'll make sure we haven't got any more snags. So I'll just get this started. Just the same way as we poured it out. I'll go down until I can't go down anymore. And then I'm going to have to straighten out this lead again. Oh, I might get away with it. Oh, it's getting tight here. Yeah, I'll have to straighten that lead out again, guys. That's how important it is to keep the lead straight. See the difference? Just straighten it out and it goes straight down. Yeah, Grandma. All right, now if you've got a plastic or a brass nut thing that goes over there, put it over there. Some do, some don't. This is just a plastic one. I just do it finger tight like that. No worries at all. Right, so we've got our liner back in. So we'll go and hook it back up to the machine now and we'll run some wire through it. So remember before, guys, how we tested that switch with that bit of wire that I made up. Well, we've still got the wire hanging out of it here. So all you do is just put your wire back into your torch lead like that. Push them in there like that. Push them in and screw them up again. Turn your machine back on. Pull the trigger and wait for your wire to come out of here. Remember, we haven't reassembled this head yet. Here it comes.
Yeah, not stuck anymore. Beautiful. Now we'll go and reassemble the head. So guys, all that's left to do now is reassemble the head. Just cut that wire off a little bit so it's easier to handle. Remember to put our contact tip holder in first. You may find a little resistance when you screw this down. All that's doing is just pushing down onto the liner. It's perfectly fine. Just tweak them up a little bit. Once again, put your gas ring on. Depending on your gas ring, if you've got a ceramic one, it may not fit over your holder, so you have to put the ring on first and then your holder. But mine's a silicon-based thing, so it stretches. Put your contact tip in. Before you do that, just make sure it's clear. Look down it, make sure you can see daylight through it. I don't know if you guys can see that. Just tweak him up a little bit. Put your gas nozzle back on. And Bob's your wombat. No more wire stuck in the liner. yee Anyway guys, that's about it for the day. Same as usual, you like my video, subscribe, come and say day at peachtools.com, drop me a like, drop me a comment. If you're interested in seeing what I find in some of my dumpsters in my day job, check the links below and I'll put some links there to some videos of some uh, treasure that I've found in my dumpsters. Anyway guys, have a great one. Bye. Peach tools.com.com.com.